welcome to AARP Connecticut in your community. Hi, Malin Moore. I am your host for today's program. I am on staff with the AARP Connecticut nonprofit statewide office where we do advocacy and community outreach. We come to you in your local community with AARP's purpose in mind, and that is to empower you to choose how you live as you age. We hope to empower you today by enriching your life with letting you know about ARP activities and events, and many of which we like to call fun with purpose. And whatever age you are, don't go away. These activities are for all ages. So let's get right to it. I'd like to introduce uh, my guest today, Nora Duncan, and welcome, Nora. Thank you, Elaine. I appreciate being here. We appreciate having you. So Nora, before we get to the specific fun with purpose events, uh, if you can just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, you are, I know you're the state director for ARP Connecticut, but uh, what is your role doing that? Well, um, as state director, I am in charge of the Connecticut state office, and that's uh, you and your colleague staff. There's uh, five more of you who work for the Connecticut state office. And then our volunteer corps of about 150 uh, really active, awesome volunteers for AARP Connecticut. So I'm, you know, the head of that ship with all of you doing your roles. And, you know, like you said, our, our job is uh, community outreach, education, and advocacy. You know, we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan social mission organization with a membership. We've got 600,000 members here in Connecticut. So we are here to you know, fight on their behalf, provide them tools and services, and make sure they're getting what they need for them and their families. Great. And, and we do define ARP members as 50 and older, but I'd like to reiterate that all that we're talking about today is uh, great for any age. And the name of the program, again, ARP, Connecticut Fun with Purpose. Nora, uh, Fun with Purpose, what does that mean to AARP, please? Well, to AARP, that means that when we are out there fulfilling our social mission, which is to empower people to age the way they want to age, to live the way they want to live, we're doing it not so we're out giving lectures and you know boring speeches all over the place, but we're having fun. So people are engaging with us and they want to both come out, socialize, learn, participate, I don't want to have um, boring events that nobody wants to attend the lane. That's that's not a good way to run a business or a nonprofit. So we make sure that we're trying to mix um, fun and social activity into our social mission based uh, programs and priorities. And, and before the program's over, we're going to also tell you how you can volunteer with ARP uh, Connecticut. And we like our volunteers to have fun too. Their yeah. choice to volunteer. Everybody has fun. Sometimes the, the subjects are serious, you know, can be caregiving, uh, making sure you don't outlive your money, things like that, but we want you to have fun. So Nora, so if somebody wants to uh, view our events, uh, platforms, or how do they get to us to do that? All right, well, the first thing is that we are, during the pandemic, we were exclusively virtual. Um, we are starting to move back to some in-person events, slowly making our way into sponsoring activities in the community. Um, but, you know, when we're talking about virtual events, we are talking about mostly Zoom. We do our, our virtual events in a Zoom webinar platform so that our presentation is smooth and seamless. And we've got a really well-trained tech team, which is made up of all volunteers who are gonna run the, uh, the chat, make sure people get their questions answered. You know, the list goes on. But so, <laughs> I mean, if you could think back to when we started, we had a lot of experiments when we first started doing virtual events. And I think it was April or May of 2020. Uh, and a lot of lessons have been learned since then. And so we make sure things go as smoothly as possible. Glitches happen in the tech world, but not remotely like they used to, and not compared to how um, still a lot of things run, as I see when I'm in other organizations' events. And in person, you know, this is, um, it's, it's sort of a little bit uh, mix and match right now, I would say, but our traditional and um, regular cadence of in-person events involves everything from um, meeting folks out at uh, AARP night at the baseball game, for instance, or at one of our great venues across Connecticut, or our Movies for Grownups platform, where we see 
movies in person where you're getting some interactions with AARP staff and volunteers on our social mission uh, items, um, voter education, things like that. So, I mean, it's really a, a variety of topics, but the great thing is it's really easy to find out what we're doing and when we're doing it. And great, Nora, appreciate that overview. And of course, to find these events, we'll put this up on the screen. Uh, always our go-to website, aarp.org forward slash CT events. And we also have another website, we'll put it up as well, a YouTube website, uh, it's youtube.com forward slash AARP Connecticut. And now we're gonna move to, speaking of that website, we're gonna move to some specific events. So uh, Nora, let's talk about that website and coffee and tea with AARP Connecticut. Yeah, so the YouTube channel is a great place to see our video content. Now we don't record all of our virtual events, but we do have a really nice selection of uh, opportunities for folks to view different kinds of shows that we produce um, on various topics. Now, Coffee and Tea with AARP Connecticut is something we started um, as a reaction to our Connecticut State Legislature uh, shutting down to public access. So we had to try to figure out a way where we could engage um, influencers, legislators, decision makers, policy makers on areas that are of specific interest to AARP members and their families and our agenda. Um, and so this show is one where we have brought in people from uh, the Speaker of the House to the Commissioner on Aging and Disability Services, to the long-term care ombudsman, to uh, the Senate Minority Leader. The list goes on and on. But the point of this is, is for our volunteers and our staff to engage these folks so that we can be on the record on important issues. And we can share that with our membership and anybody who is interested in learning about specific policies or um, programs. We've had folks in from our livable communities work in our uh, key communities. We've had folks in from our um, age-friendly universities. So it really is um, kind of a, a lot, but the nice thing about it is that it's always with someone who is interesting and important in Connecticut. Uh, and it brings our volunteers and our staff together to talk about those things. Yeah, I love having the volunteers participate in that as well. Another reason to volunteer with ARP uh, Connecticut. And that website again is youtube.com forward slash AARP Connecticut. If you're enjoying the show you're watching today and you want to see more of it, there are so many subjects that we have. Uh, you can go to that website as well. What are the subjects uh, Nora mentioned up front? that our platform is Zoom for our virtual events. If you're still getting used to Zoom, we've got a, a little tutorial on that that we did with a volunteer. Uh, be fearless, let's Zoom. Uh, the driver safety program that we do, very robust program. Uh, smart driving as you age is available. We're gonna talk about job seeker events coming up. We've got a whole program on older worker wis wisdom. One on veterans, ARP salutes veterans. And of course, none of us wanna outlive our money take control of your financial future. So that's just a, 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 a sort of a uh, small amount of all the programming that we have to offer. Again, that is on our YouTube link. And Nora, Elaine, I'll like mention, to add, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention our, our newest uh, addition to our regular programming, which is fighting fraud with AARP. And so monthly we have a video series on all the different kinds of fraud and scams that are out there impacting everyone, whether you're, you know, 18 with your first uh, credit card or you're uh, 88 and someone is trying to come after your lifelong wealth. Um, there are scams out there. People are, there are criminals who spend all their time trying to get everyone's hard earned money. And we bring in folks from federal law enforcement, the attorney general's office, um, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. Department of Banking, uh, I can't even keep up with the number of partners we have in the fraud space. So that's a really good educational um, program that we are happy to bring on in 2022. And lots of volunteers, again, participating okay. in that. Once again, that website, youtube.com forward slash ARP Connecticut. Nora, Virtual University, what is that? And if you can give us some examples, please. 
Yes. So we have a number of age-friendly universities here in Connecticut and some additional universities that are striving to become part of this international age-friendly university movement. And we are so excited to work with them that um, in 2021, we kicked off the Virtual U program, which brings in faculty and staff from these Connecticut universities to present on a variety of subjects. And when I say a variety of subjects, I mean a variety of subjects. <laughs> so, um, so music and history, right? So we'll talk with a professor from, I believe, Central Connecticut State University about everything from Beatles to jazz, to Sinatra, and what that means for sort of the historical perspective, looking back in American history. We have had um, assistive technology programming with organizations that live within those universities um, that, that work to help make um, technology and videography and all these things accessible to people with all of different kinds of abilities. We have had a ongoing new program with the, and I'm gonna get this wrong, but the um, International University for Religion and Peace, which used to have a different name. It used to be Hartford Seminary, but about what religion means across different religions as a member of a community. You may be of a different religion than I am, but like, let me help me understand what that means. Um, you know, from Athens and the great, uh, playwrights of, of that era. I mean, it goes on and on and on, but it's so amazing to be able to showcase these talented, smart uh, professors and staff from these universities. It really, um, I think, showcases what Connecticut, a small mighty state has to offer. And we do have a lot of universities and I hope the ones that aren't members of the uh, age-friendly university network are inspired to become members of that network when they see what we're doing. And, and by the way, if you're affiliated with the university and you just heard Nora say, uh, hey, maybe I'm interested, uh, you can email us, ctaarp at aarp.org. We will get that up on the screen also. And uh, Nora, I, if you could mention also, I understand there's a way to get continuing education credit for some of our uh, virtual university. What's that about and how do people access that, please? Okay, this is really exciting if you work in certain fields. So when we have these programs, we try to make them uh, of interest to an AARP member who's retired and just looking to learn something new on a regular basis, to a university student, to someone who's working in um, the community. So we have been able to offer continuing education credits at no cost to the professional as part of a lot of these series. And this is really about the licensure and renewal process for professions that include social work and a whole bunch of variety of social workers, licensed clinical therapists, I mean, the list goes on and on. To nursing professionals, we have been able to offer it to law enforcement through our relationship with the International Association of Financial Crimes Investigators. We have a relationship with the state police, which the regular average person wouldn't be taking part in, but it's important to note because it really helps bring in um, content that uh, law enforcement might not normally get about aging and what it means to um, work with older adults. And the greatest thing about this is that it's bringing new audiences to us who are recognizing the value we have for them professionally, but also personally. So you might come in for a, a social work credit for a one hour course that we can offer you at no charge, which is of great value to you at age, I'll make it up, 35 as a social worker, and then come to find out that we're having a, a movies for grownups for a film you were looking forward to seeing. And you don't have to be a member of AARP to join us at that, but you're learning about us. You are attaching some value to our social mission and bringing that into your, your workplace and your community. And I think for us, it just helps grow the knowledge that people have about what it means to, to age, um, really busting stereotypes about aging. Um, but also it's more than that. We bring, you know, these cultural competencies and, and, and things like that to folks that, that would not normally be getting free credits, but would certainly not normally be getting them with AARP. 
Well, a perfect example of fun with purpose. Yeah. What a great benefit there. And Nora, best way for people to reach us again at the uh, Connecticut AARP at ARP.org if they have questions about yeah. that. So if you have questions about any of this or, you know, you go to AARP.org forward slash CT events to find direct links to these and our national programming. So there's a lot there, uh, as well as programming from other states that people can join in on. Um, you can email us at ct at aarp.org with any question really about AARP. We check that daily um, and get back to people as quickly as we can. So that's ct at aarp.org. And that also I have to, as program specialist for volunteer engagement, I have to also mention that is a great way to find out about volunteering as well. So uh, Nora, I'm going to just sort of throw some activities at you. If you can briefly elaborate, we'll try to get to as many as we can here. Uh, Beardsley Zoo. So we have had a long standing relationship with Connecticut's Beardsley Zoo located in Bridgeport. Uh, it's actually the state's only real zoo uh, affiliated with the International Zoological Association. I'm sure I'm wrong about that name, but um, that relationship was uh, very much an in-person relationship where we would bring our members in to go to free days at the zoo, which is a great family event or just a great walking around alone event. We've hosted after hours at the zoo events there, um, you know, cocktail reception in their carousel area where we interact with people on things that are important to them in their community. They were really great when we had to switch to virtual and we started doing virtual tours. And currently we are in the second year of sponsorship of their uh, monthly virtual lecture series, changing up every month what they're talking about. We sponsor that and people can register for it um, through our sponsorship and they can find that online. Well, and another great example, any age program mm -hmm. uh, virtually. With oh, we, and and when we were in person, it was like always grandparents and grandchildren, you know, and, and that was great because it gave everybody something to do um, and, you know, nice weather and even a little, if it, the weather was a little bad there, there was still lots of shelter. So it was great. I can't wait yeah, to get great, back to that. Great destination. Uh, Mystic Seaport and Mystic Aquarium. So Mystic Seaport and Mystic Aquarium, we've had ongoing relationships with them both. Uh, online, our Mystic uh, Seaport series has been possibly one of our highest attended online events. They have so much history there. I mean, it from, you know, think, I mean, there's just things I never knew about. So we've been able to do a lot online with them. We were in person before and with both organizations, the Mystic Seaport and the Mystic Aquarium, I am planning an o September, October, 2022 virtual in-person mix. Now that's coming soon to a website near you for registration, haven't quite figured out exactly how we're doing that yet, but we are, you know, um, as everybody is exploring the new world uh, sort of post COVID. But the nice thing about those locations is there's a lot of outside space so even if you're worried about going inside, you can you can gain so much out of the experience. Um, and if people aren't able to join us in person, they can join us virtually. And in so many cases, there's people from all over the country and sometimes the world joining us on these virtual events because they're they're searchable from anywhere. And reminding our viewer, if you're just tuning in, ARP Connecticut, Fun with Purpose. And uh, regardless of when you're watching this program, whether it's now or months from now, possibly even into the next year, ARP.org forward slash CT events, you can always find our current events and keep checking it. Uh, Nora, I know we've done some things with Art Museum, Wadsworth yeah. Athenaeum. The Wadsworth Athenaeum, um, and like Mystic Seaport and Mystic Aquarium, by the way, we have AARP member, oh, and the Beardsley Zoo, local um, discounts that we are able to organize through AARP Connecticut. So if you wanna go there on your own, go to aarp.org forward slash CT discounts. You're gonna see all of our local discounts. You can use them at all of these fantastic locations. We have partnered with the Wadsworth Athenaeum for two years now on virtual tours, they're docent led virtual tours on specific artists or specific displays that they have, maybe a, uh, a special exhibit that they have. 
um, really great way to bring some educational experience with some culture to people who love the art world or just want to learn about the art world. Great. Um, and this is one of my favorites, as you know, healthy cooking demos. Yeah. So there is a uh, vegan uh, chef and author in from Connecticut that we use to do these healthy cooking demos. I think we are on oof, maybe our third year with her. Um, and she is just so charming and delightful and gets recipes and ingredients out in advance so you can cook along with her or you can watch and decide what you want to do later. But she really brings the issues of um, a healthy diet into how we can all age um, well. You know, it's not medical advice. It's not it's none of this. It's just putting common sense practices into um, really enjoyable meals so that whether you're a vegan or you're someone who just wants to explore a little bit more of a healthy cooking, uh, vegetarian or vegan, um, options, she's a great, she's a great resource for us. Yeah. Re really fun program. And, uh, moving into another arena here, Nora, uh, a job seeker program, you could be 50 and older and either you're looking for a job, um, you want to change jobs, uh, you want to start a new business. We have resources for you, right, Nora? Yes. So aarp.org forward slash work is actually where I'd say is a go-to for us nationally. aarp.org forward slash work. Whether you're an employee, an entrepreneur, unemployed or employed, um, or whether you're actually an employer, we have resources that are really fantastic for both you know, figuring out how to manage this digital world that we have in terms of job seeking, um, micro learnings on LinkedIn, um, ways where we can create more inclusive, age inclusive um, employment uh, situations. But, you know, the fact is we also have Connecticut based um, programs online um, as well as national online programs. So they really talk about, you know, how age 50 and up, but frankly, good advice for a lot of people, um, take on the world of job seeking. And, you know, when I first started here at AARP, boy, was that a different environment nine years ago than it is today. Um, the great resignation, you know, the, the virtual world, all the things that have happened, um, increases in age discrimination as a result of the pandemic. Um, it's all there. It's all addressed. And people, I always said, I used to give these programs a lot. We have a couple of great volunteers who do it for us now too. But I would say, attend this if you're thinking about changing jobs or you have to change jobs because you will walk away with a nugget of information that will help you in that job search, help it make it easier, more efficient for you and you know land you in a better place. No question, you will have some great uh, takeaways and we'll put that website up that you mentioned, uh, Nora. I, I, I have to bring up this subject because whether you've experienced it or not yet, it's likely. Hopefully, you'll we'll all live to be long, uh, uh, many many years uh, living healthily in our communities. But caregiving is really critical, and of course, has always been to ARP. Yeah. So um, the unpaid family caregiver, which a lot of people are and don't even identify as, right? But if you're helping someone, an adult, um, with any kind of the um, activities of daily living, grocery shopping, bill paying, you know, medication management, all the way to, you know, you clearly know you're a caregiver if you're going in and giving hands-on care. These folks um, have a really critical role in maintaining our healthcare system, truthfully, but also a difficult and rewarding role in their own lives oftentimes. Um, there are... I think we have the 478,000, we believe, fam unpaid family caregivers in Connecticut. Uh, we offer programmatic resources. We have a website um, with Connecticut specific resources, aarp.org forward slash CT caregiving. And as well, we fight for, I think some of this is actually more important in some ways than some of the programmatic resources we have. We do a lot of that work in the advocacy space on this, including uh, significant work over eight or nine years that resulted finally in um, the Connecticut Paid Family and Medical Leave Program, where no longer do people, most people, I mean, there's a few little 
caveats here in terms of who qualifies, but no longer do most people have to choose between uh, their paycheck and caring for their loved one, right? And um, while the typical caregiver is a you know 45 year old female caring for children and parents, um, the gamut is huge. And the number of millennials that are caregivers is just crazy. And the number of men who are becoming caregivers is increasing all the time. So these re it's a tough time for people. Um, we'd like people to access our caregiving resources before they really need them, so they're prepared, uh, but they're always there for you. Uh, crucial topic, crucial yeah. topic. Um, we have just about a minute to go, believe it or not. Good. I knew we All wouldn't right. get to everything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw out a couple things real fast. Uh, consumer issues, utilities, 15 seconds on that one, Nora. Yeah, we fight, you know, Connecticut's the most expensive electric rates, for instance. We are constantly trying to fight for consumer protections, keeping rates down and the like. So we've got a team of volunteers who help with that. Join us. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned national programs. Another one of my favorites, uh, if you can just zero in on Movies for Grownups again. Yeah, Movies for Grownups. You can watch free movies online and soon free movies in person. And so much more coming yeah, <laughs> from so our national more. office as well. Music, travel, exercise, uh, you name it, it's there. Uh, the name of the show today, ARP Connecticut, Fun with Purpose. Hopefully we have enlightened you about all that ARP, ARP has to offer behind the scenes. And uh, Nora, uh, you know volunteerism is near and dear to our founder of ARP, certainly to us on a daily basis. If you'd like to just do a quick... Um, um, pitch, if you will, to people watching if they're interested in volunteering. Yes, our backbone of our work is volunteers. We could not be everywhere without them. We hire volunteers carefully. We partner volunteers with mentors. We train volunteers. We make sure they have fun. And we also make sure that volunteering never costs anything but their time and experience. So we reimburse for volunteer related expenses. It's a great team. I can't wait to see them all regularly again. Uh, but yeah, reach out CT at AARP.org. Great. Uh, yeah, volunteerism near to near and dear to us. In fact, the motto of ARP's founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus, to serve, not to be served. And we think of that every day here at ARP Connecticut. Nora, I want to thank you so much for being our guest today. Nora Duncan, the statewide director for ARP on the nonprofit side, doing advocacy and community outreach. I like to call her our fearless leader. And Nora, kudos to you and your staff for creating just a, uh, I have to say, a plethora of activities and events uh, for our viewer. Once again, if you want to access any of that, ARP.org forward slash CT events. Nora, thanks again for being with AARP Connecticut in your community. Thank you, Elaine. A pleasure indeed. And uh, thank you for watching. Again, if you are a member of ARP Connecticut, you are amongst more than a half a million right here in the state of Connecticut. We appreciate that. It has been a pleasure to serve as your host for ARP Connecticut in your community for the past five years. New news from me after 10 years with ARP Connecticut, I will be retiring shortly. But before I go, I want to thank Win TV in Windsor, Connecticut. They are the producing station and their staff, executive director Jenny Horan and production director Howard Marsh. Big thanks as well to ARP Connecticut volunteer executive producer John Coates and theme music composer, preceded by executive producer ARP volunteer Marilyn Diaz. Could not have done it without you, John and Marilyn, and of course you, Howard, from the station. And appreciation to our many guests. Many of our volunteers have joined me on the program and a variety of community partners to ARP Connecticut in your community. My lasting hope is that we have conveyed ARP's purpose with our programming. And that again is to empower you to choose how you live as you age. Please continue to visit www.arp.org CT events for all our great activities. If you want to volunteer or you have questions about anything else, once again, email us at ct at arp.org. Goodbye. And as always, thanks for watching.